Hello, you're watching iPod Touch 4 4th generation backlight repair coil and IC replacement from CyberDogLLC.com. Okay, so starting off, this board was uh, originally water damaged, so it has some corrosion, actually quite a bit of corrosion. So what I did first was like put some alcohol on it, isopropyl alcohol on the board. And then I brush, quickly use a toothbrush and brush off the area to clean it just so I can see where the IC and the coil and now I use more alcohol and cleaning a little bit more and also expecting the bowl after cleaning after all it was covered with uh, a lot of crusty um, crystals formed after the water corrosion Oh, um, I also cut off the frame. So in order to chop this frame out, you see on the very edge side, um, the edge of the frame that's, that's still there. You ch make two cuts, two incisions on top and below. And then you just slowly pry off the shelving on top uh, to the side of the larger board. So it's just away from the main board and go to, toward the outside. Once you make the two incisions, you pry it off and slowly um eventually this uh the casing and the frame will be removed safely and the end um you can see on the very edge on the on the third side uh i chop off some of the uh, uh, some of the frame that's connected to the logic board with a scissor okay now i'm starting my repair First of all, you want to remove the IC and the coil. You can do it one at a time or do it together, it doesn't really matter. If you're comfortable changing the IC, you can change the coil and the IC and remove them together. It will save your time. If you're not, you, you can test the coil first before you um, change the IC. I think to go into the IC first. This is, I'm a little rushing things a little bit. All you want to do, ideally, you want to heat up this board with a preheater or even just a higher gum for roughly one minute to two minutes. I guess on that day, I was kind of short on time and I want to get the repair done as soon as possible and get out. So, uh, it's it's best if you heat it, preheat for one to two minutes at 100 degrees Celsius. The 100 degrees Celsius should be the board temperature, not the iron temperature. Uh, Heat gun temperature. Heat gun could be whatever temperature, but the ball should be at one degree Celsius for one to two minutes preheat. But I didn't do that, so right now I'm, I'm kind of like doing preheat. I'm just heating it from far, heating it from close, heating it from far. The idea is you don't want the temperature on the board to be too extreme and too, very too much. Um, let's see what happens. So now I'm actually trying to move the the um, coil off. The best way to do this repair is to put some flux on it, like I did. Uh, this is quick alloy, no clean flux, premium quality, it's white. Um, you put this flux because it has acid in it and it's no clean. What flux does is really kind of like oil. It, it keeps the temperature to a stable temperature, which is roughly 300 degrees Celsius, give or take. And the way to remove any kind of IC or coil is on a surface among components is to, if you want to use heat gun, like I did just now, you have the flux, you make, you make the joint soft, and you set your heat gun to maximum speed, maximum heat. In my case, uh, this heat gun goes up to 500 degrees Celsius. I don't know if it actually goes 500 degrees Celsius, it's probably roughly at 400, give or take. But so what you want what you want to do is you want to spend as little time as possible and heat out the, the well after you warm out the board obviously and then you heat up the component as close as you can as soon as you can and you don't spend more than two seconds on the board because if you spend more time on the board the chances higher that you start going to melt stuff and burn things on the neighboring components. So if you use max speed max heat, you do it quick then your chances of damaging the other components is very low, if any. Um, oh, so there's six pins on this IC. I just easily burn it off on the board. Well, 
he got it off with the bullet board. I was a little worried here because uh, I put a little bit too much pressure and I it looks like one of the pack I lifted. And later on I find out that's not the case because you can still see some of instead the, the pad was damaged, the chip the IC itself it's it has a little plastic on it. The IC itself broke off a little bit pissed. So that, that little black air stuff that you see right now is blocking one of the pad, one of the six pads from the IC. It's actually from the IC. It's part of the IC that, that got attached and it break off and attach onto the larger board. So the larger board itself is fine. The track it's it's there. Uh, that's actually ping one by the way, that the one that the, the little black dot that's being covered by a piece of IC attached on the larger board. So that's actually a very important like important joint. So I, I, I was a little worried here actually. But I I'm, I'm sure I did everything right. Um I might have put too much force on the on the on the tweezer, but it it's something you adjust and you get used to. I was in a hurry, so uh, put too much force. But it's fine, everything worked out. Um this this pad is still there. It's just the IC broke off due to the heat and the force I put on. Mm, I don't remember how it goes, but I think my next step is to put some flux and put some uh, quick alloy, desoldering alloy, because this is not a connector, so I can use desoldering alloy, for, desoldering alloy or quick alloy for soldering. And since that alloy melts at 60 degrees Celsius, see, I have some quick alloy on my on my uh, iron, and I'm trying to tin tin the existing solder pads with the new quick alloy alloy. So uh, advantage of doing that is before I have to heat up to 300 degrees Celsius to get the components off the board. At least the board has to be at 300 degrees Celsius to to melt the solder. The quick alloy melts at 60 degrees. Celsius. So you do the math. Uh, now I only need to heat the board above 60 degrees Celsius in order to make the joints to be wet and um, melt molten. So I could use a heat gun essentially to do the soldering on at really low temperature, probably less than 100 degrees Celsius. So in doing that, I I when I when you use a heat gun for that kind of soldering at that low temperature, at this low temperature, you don't even need the Kevlar tape to protect your um your neighboring components because you're not even the neighboring component not even gonna budge until you heat out to two hundred degrees, two hundred fifty degrees Celsius, and you only need roughly a little bit above sixty degrees Celsius to melt these solders. As you can see, it's always stay modern. This is my uh, uh, soldering iron is generating a lot more heat than 60 degrees Celsius. So right now the molten alloy is it's probably 200 degrees or 100 degrees Celsius local localized. That's why it's once it dries, um, once it cools down, it, that's that's below 60 degrees Celsius. So now I'm just trying to get the the alloy onto all the pads and again that pad is not holding the alloy too well because it has a little bit of plastic came from the chip that uh, came from the back of the IC that's blocking my heat transfer so um, so I'm just working on that right now you have to melt the existing that free alloy and clear off that little part in order to get some I think I did it. I did I got out. Okay, so now all you see is is a bridge between the coils pad and um, the capacitor. This is what happens when you use the quick alloy, desoldering alloy. They they can get all over the place because uh, they really they're very soft and they are they are like, kind of like liquid. Uh, don't don't be afraid. This is very easy to remove. Um, you just need a small enough soldering iron, like a really fine pin or a like the tweezer I'm using right now. The solder iron I'm using right now, the pen is that uh, the head is actually not that fine. Uh, if you want a really fine head, you can buy either buy it or you can you can grind it down yourself. Just you know, grind it down with like a with a stone or with a machine. You can 
grind down the you can sharpen the tip essentially and that was sort of the that that would um, break the bridge whatever bridge that you make and since this quick alloy is just like liquid you can sometimes uh if the spot is not as tight as this you can use the solder wick to remove the excess solder alloy that you put on uh, another way to do this it's fast is the easiest way is to put some flux on like i seems to be doing right now put some flux no no i'm using i'm what am i doing i think that's the pen oh, anyway put some put some flux on and what you're gonna see is you're gonna have like liquid liquid heat because the flux is like oil it retains the heat throughout the region and it also has acid on it so it's it just softens the alloy and makes it really uh, mellow and more like oil almost like it's it's like you can you can move around instead of being sticking onto the board and it just become very wettable and uh, the capillary effect of the the molten alloy is more apparent of so flux Okay, so now I have like a huge chunk of flux bridging all over. I'm oh, sorry, a huge chunk of alloy bridging all over. That's exactly what I wanted. Now I put more flux on. Oh, that actually that's alcohol. So I'm just cleaning off the 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 flux residue. It doesn't matter what flux you use. Like I use high quality synthetic, no clean flux. You still gonna have some um, tacky residue left by the flux. It doesn't matter what flux you use. That's gonna happen. But this is a lot better than the uh, the organic flux, the rosin flux. So it's considered not clean, but it still leaves residue. We still have to clean it sometimes. Okay, so like you see, it was bridged, it was sticky, and once you put the flux on, uh, the alloy behaves like oil in the water. It separates itself really nicely and it moves around on the board very nicely. If you have any SS alloy that's on the solder, join right now that's a great time to remove it once you put some flux from quick uh quick alloy no clean flux synthetic high quality high grade no clean flux i might add then these uh alloy behave itself so i'm just cleaning out the ss alloy i put on uh ss flux i put on okay so this Pretty much done, almost. Um, the pads are ready. The pads are, are primed and tinned with the low melt solder, the soldering alloy. But in this case, we're gonna use it for soldering. So solder alloy, that solder alloy, it melts at sixty degrees Celsius, roughly. Now I'm just waiting for myself on the video to put um the IC and the coil back to its proximal location. You don't need to be exact with soldering. You just need to have it aligned proximally attached. This is me drinking soda while watching myself soldering. I got this too. All right, so when you align the, this is the backlight IC for iPad Touch 4. When you align the IC, you want to, um, I, I don't really remember. I think the dot is facing, you remember the pin that had a little piece of plastic attached to it, a little black piece? That's pin one. And you want to match the dot on the IC chip. You, you will be able to see it. I don't know if you can see it from this video, but when under your microscope or your naked eyes, actually, you might be able no, you might need magnifying glasses or some sort. You'll be able to see there's a dot on the IC. That that will be pin one. That's how you tell the orientation of the pin, uh, the IC. So now I already put it on, and there's a layer of flux in between the IC and the larger board. You see, it's like the sticky flux. Okay, so I'm just trying to get some better working area, moving a little bit. Okay, so once you put it on, now it's still not soldered on. I'm using low speed, high heat, excuse me, hot air gun. Okay, let me repeat myself again because I just, okay, it's good, it's good. Uh, I'm using low speed, high heat, hot air gun setting. You don't want a high speed because um, 
they will fly off the board if you or you might damage other parts if you have high temperature right other component might just fly right off the board if you use high speed high heat because i really want to heat this up i don't want to waste my time heating other stuff up and since this alloy only melts at 6 degrees celsius it's pretty much already melted now i'm just holding the uh, heat gun over there to uh, keep the temperature on above 60 so it's always stay molten i'm poking with my dental pick right now because even if you heat the alloy it, it's not a guarantee that the alloy will take hold onto the solder uh the, the metal parts on the ic it's not a guarantee it will take hold because you also have to heat out that metal part in order to get the capillary effect bonding from the alloy to the metal joint from the ic metal, metal legs and using a dental pick poking at it, you create necessary stress and stra uh, necessary force of vibration, give or take, and to get those uh, alloy to solder to mix with the joint that's on the IC. And also you press it down so um, you get a better larger surface area to get the bump happening. And now I'm just poking the IC too. Yeah. Okay, so same thing with the coil, you just put it to a proximal location, have some flux on it or not, because this coil is so big. Uh, you heat it up above 60 degrees Celsius. If you want to do this with a hair blower, you can do it, but I, I, I prefer you use the solding um, hair, higher gun. Again, low speed, high heat. You see me pushing, you see, you see me in the video pushing this coil left and right, and it bounces right back. That means the solder, solder joint is already melted, already bonded with the uh, coil. That's why if you push it, the capillary effect will just suck the component right back. And that's, that's, that's one way for you to tell visually to see like behind the coil, the bond is formed and it's strong. It has strong capillary effect. That's another reason why you might want to poke it with a dental pick left and right. Just to watch that. It's quite fun actually. When that happens. So, but also, well, yeah, I'll just bring it up again. This is why you don't need to get precise uh, orientation placement of the part. It will just align itself once the solder is molten. Now I'm just inspecting it and see how beautiful the joints are made. Thank you very much. This is the end of the repair. See you next time. Bye.